Chapter 4, Fate's Gift The evening after their return from Carvajal, Aragon decided to test the stone as Murloc had. Alone in his room, he set it on the bed and laid three tools next to it. He started with a wood mallet and lightly tapped the stone. It produced a subtle ringing. Satisfied, he picked up the next tool, a heavy leather hammer. A mournful peal reverberated when it struck. Lastly, he pounded a small chisel against it. The metal did not chip or scratch the stone, but it produced the clearest sound yet. As the final note died away, he thought he heard a faint squeak. Murloc said the stone was hollow. There could be something of value inside. I don't know how to open it, though. There must have been a good reason for someone to shape it, but whoever sent the stone into the spine hasn't taken the trouble to retrieve it, or doesn't know where it is. But I don't believe that a magician with enough power to transport the stone wouldn't be able to find it again. So was I meant to have it? He could not answer the question. Resigned to an unsolvable mystery, he picked up the tools and returned the stone to its shelf. That night, he was abruptly roused from sleep. He listened carefully. All was quiet. Uneasy, he slid his hands under the mattress and grasped his knife. He waited a few minutes, then slowly sank back to sleep. A squeak pierced the silence, tearing him back to wakefulness. He rolled out of his bed and yanked the knife from its sheath. Fumbling in the tinderbox, he lit a candle. The door to his room was closed. Though the squeak was too loud for a mouse or rat, he still checked under the bed. Nothing. He sat on the edge of the mattress and rubbed the sleep from his eyes. Another squeak filled the air and he started violently. Where was this noise coming from? Nothing could be in the floor or walls. They were solid wood. The same went for his bed, and he would have noticed if anything had crawled into his straw mattress during the night. His eyes settled on the stone. He took it off the shelf and absently cradled it as he studied the room. A squeak rang in his ears and reverberated through his fingers. It came from the stone. The stone had given him nothing but frustration and anger, and now it wouldn't even let him sleep. It ignored his furious glare and sat solidly, occasionally peeping. Then it gave one very loud squeak and it fell silent. Aragon warily put it away and got back under the sheets. Whatever secrets the stone held, it would have to wait until morning. The moon was shining through his window when he woke again. The stone was rocking rapidly on the shelf, knocking against the wall. It was bathed in a cool moonlight that bleached its surface. Aragon jumped out of bed, knife in hand. The motion stopped, but he remained tense. Then the stone started squeaking and rocking faster than ever. With an oath, he began dressing. He did not care how valuable the stone might be. He was going to take it far away and bury it. The rocking stopped. The stone became quiet. It quivered. Then he rolled forward and dropped onto the floor with a loud thump. He inched towards the door in alarm and the stone wobbled toward him. Suddenly a crack appeared on the stone, then another, and another. Transfixed, Aragon leaned forward, still holding the knife. At the top of the stone, where all the cracks met, a small piece wobbled, as if it were balanced on something, then rose and toppled onto the floor. Another series of squeaks. A small, dark head poked out of the hole, followed by a weirdly angled body. Aragon gripped the knife tighter and held very still. Soon the creature was all the way out of the stone. It stayed in place for a moment, then skittered into the moonlight. Aragon recoiled in shock. Standing in front of him, licking off the membrane that encased it, was a dragon. 